Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to our channel and thank you for joining us here again today. So last week we spoke about the infamous Dross case and if you haven't seen that I'll link it up here. But this next case that we're going to talk about is one that I found quite interesting. I mean, I find them all interesting. But this is a case that hits very close to home because where the crime took place essentially is where I grew up for around a year or two of my life. And the area is very small. You can't exactly swing anything without hitting your neighbors. But it just shows you that you can never know truly what happens behind closed doors. And on this channel, we have spoken before about children who have grown up to murder. And we have asked the question whether children are born bad. But this case that we're going to talk about, the children are definitely victims in their own right. And they definitely did have a difficult childhood. And they may have ended up becoming killers themselves. But without me revealing too much more, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. In 1994, in Nuruk, which is in the deep south of Cape Town, a young girl was born named Phoenix Racing Cloud Tron. Phoenix's parents were both free spirits and they loved to go wherever the wind blew them. Both her parents made sure that they lived off the grid as much as possible. And Phoenix's mom, whose name is Rosemary, had Phoenix when she was 20 years old. Both Phoenix's mom and dad lived in a caravan. Like I said, they were free spirits and hippies. And they loved to move from different places and they would sell their puppets from their caravan. And they would also sell little trinkets and food sometimes just to make ends meet. Both Rosemary and her husband at the time would smoke a lot of weed and they would also take a lot of psychedelics. And yes, they would do all of this with baby Phoenix in the caravan at the time. So when Phoenix was three years old, her parents ended up separating. Her dad moved out of the caravan and went to live on his own. And Phoenix stayed with her mom in the caravan. Phoenix's mom stayed within this deep south area of Cape Town, where she then moved to a small holding where there were other people living in caravans. And they made kind of a community of it where they would grow their own food, fruits, vegetables, and they would kind of look after each other. But I say that very lightly because Phoenix would later report that when she was this young, her mom would often leave her alone and go meditate for hours and hours. And she would often be very hungry. She would not have any food because, yes, they lived in a community or a little commune, but no one was really looking after her. It was not their responsibility to look after a toddler. And Rosemary knew this and she didn't really care. She just left Phoenix there. Then in 2000, when Rosemary was six years old, her mom decided, well, I've had enough of you. Off you go, go stay with your father, I'm going to go to South America now, and I'm going to go live up my life. So she dumps Phoenix off at her father's house, and I say house very loosely, because he didn't actually have a freestanding house or a flat. He lived in an abandoned building that a whole lot of other people had made into homes. And even though Phoenix's father was relatively more stable than Phoenix's mother, he didn't win any parenting awards at all. Phoenix's father was incredibly into partying, drinking, taking drugs, and he would often bring his friends over to the home that he stayed with Phoenix in. And sadly, at one of these very rough, drug-induced, alcohol-induced parties, there was one man who ended up going into Phoenix's bedroom where she slept and where he then took advantage of her. It's unclear whether he had his way with her completely or what really happened in the bedroom. But sadly, this was not Phoenix's first encounter with a man who would take advantage of her. Because a few years later, Phoenix's grandmother's boyfriend also took advantage of her and took her into his bedroom where he then had his way with her. So clearly, Phoenix had no sense of stability. The people who she believed or she would have hoped to protect her and look after her, were letting her down in every way that they could. Then around a year after Phoenix's mom, Rosemary, left to South America, she returned back to South Africa, now pregnant. So Rosemary returned and she took Phoenix away from her dad and took her back to the caravan that was still on the small holding. Rosemary eventually gave birth to a baby boy just outside of the caravan in the commune with the help of the other women within this community. Of course, now the caravan is getting a bit tight. So Rosemary would move her children between the caravan and an abandoned building, just like where her father stayed. But Rosemary made this other abandoned building their home as well. Then four years later, after moving between the abandoned building and back to the caravan and vice versa, Rosemary fell pregnant again four years later with a baby girl. And just like before with her baby brother, Phoenix was responsible for her baby sister as well. So Phoenix was still a child herself. And she had to make sure that she looked after both the babies 
cleaning their nappies, cleaning them, feeding them, making sure they go to bed, everything. And Phoenix and her siblings were often left alone, either because her mom was off gallivanting somewhere or because she worked night shift at a bar or wherever she was. And as Phoenix was growing older, she was now ready to go to school. She was of age to go to school and she really wanted to. But because Phoenix was responsible for looking after her younger siblings, she wasn't able to go to school. She had to stay home and either self-study or she was being taught by her mom and homeschooled. And Rosemary, her mother, didn't really care for Phoenix's education at all. Schooling was not important to Rosemary at all. She believed that she could learn life skills from life. So Phoenix really did struggle to have a formal education in her younger years. So we fast forward a few years and Rosemary ended up getting married to another man. And this man created such a toxic and volatile environment for the kids as well as Rosemary. He was incredibly violent and incredibly miserable and just very toxic. Rosemary would constantly chuck him out of the house and then he would be back. And then they would kiss and make up and then it all started again with the fighting. Then she would chuck him out and it would just be a constant back and forth with this man leaving, coming in, fighting, kissing, leaving, that kind of thing. And with all of this going on, Phoenix still had to look after her younger siblings. But as she got older, she was really determined to get her education. And she self-schooled herself from grade three until eventually she put enough pressure on her mom to give her the formal education that she deserved. And her mom did start paying for schooling and she went to Fisher High School until she was 16 years old. But just like Rosemary had done before, she decided that she needed a change of scenery. So she then decided, okay, Phoenix, I'm done with this. It's time to ship you off to your father, who now stays in a beautiful place called Neisner. And Neisner is this beautiful place where there are a lot of indigenous forests. But even though Neisner is an incredibly beautiful place, just like a lot of areas of South Africa, there was a lot of bloodshed that took place there long, I'm talking decades before, they used to have a lot of trade where they used to cut down the indigenous trees and there would be a lot of logging and they would make their money off these logs. But sadly, there was also a herd of indigenous elephants that lived in the Neisner forest. And I think if I'm correct, there's only one indigenous elephant left who roams Neisner forest alone. But that's completely besides the point. So Phoenix was now shipped off from Fishhook High School to now go to a high school in Neisner where her father stayed. And I'm not sure if it was just because Phoenix was going through a rebellious teenage years and maybe it was some things that were catching up to her from her childhood of being abandoned, of being neglected, and it was finally catching up to her and that's why she rebelled. Or maybe it's just a mixture of both. But basically with Phoenix's time in Neisner, she started smoking, she started taking drugs, she was acting out heavily, and she also started having unprotected sex. But even though Phoenix was having this very rebellious streak, she managed to pass high school very, very well. And during her last year of high school, she volunteered at leadership camps, and that's where she met a man named Kyle Maspero. Kyle was a year or two younger than Phoenix at the time, but these two headed off right away and they started dating. But before we skip forward, let's give a little bit of information of Kyle. So Kyle came from quite a broken home. His mom passed away when he was very young. And his father couldn't handle looking after Kyle himself. And he shipped Kyle off from this family member to that family member, then to extended family members. And nobody really wanted Kyle. And so eventually he was then sent off to foster homes. And when Kyle went to his first foster home was when he started taking heavy drugs. He started using crystal meth. In 2011, when Kyle was in high school, he was caught by one of the teachers smoking drugs at the time, and he was then asked to leave campus and he was expelled immediately. He was then taken to another school where the same thing happened. He was caught by a teacher and he was expelled immediately. Then Kyle kind of decided to fix his act a little bit, and he then went to a rehabilitation facility where he got clean, he got sober, and he then went back to high school. But sadly, not long after he went back to high school, he was caught by the principal and he was expelled not only for taking drugs, but also for stealing stuff from a school. By the time that he got expelled from the third school, this was also his third foster home that he was now put into. And when Kyle was put into the third foster home, he actually really loved it. And he was really taken in by this family. They loved him. They really cared about him. And he thrived with them. This home that Kyle was taken to, the family lived in Neisner as well. And they taught Kyle all kinds of different things. This family really loved art and photography. And that's exactly what they taught him. His foster father was a successful author. And he taught Kyle how to write beautifully, how to take beautiful photographs, and also how to draw. And he was really good at these things. He was also then accepted to another school based on the fact that he would stay sober 
which he did for a little while. And then he went to a leadership camp within the school and that's how Phoenix and Kyle met. So one thing led to another, Kyle and Phoenix started dating and a few months into their relationship, Phoenix ended up getting pregnant. And because Phoenix had become pregnant, Kyle then decided to leave his foster family in Neisner and move to Cape Town in an area called Clovelly. Phoenix also left her father and moved back in with her mom, back in the caravan with her younger sister. And where Kyle stayed in Clovelly is a very tiny little suburb right next to Fishhook. So you basically share the same main road, it's very small and it's kind of hidden within the mountains. And like I said, I found this case quite interesting because I stayed in Clovelly with my parents for a few years before Kyle actually moved into Clovelly, so small world. But no, I don't stay there anymore, just in case anyone's wondering. So once Phoenix moved back into the caravan with her mom and her sister, Phoenix noticed that her brother wasn't there and she asked her mom, you know, where's my brother? And her mom just said, oh, I sent your brother off to his father back in South America. And Phoenix was quite taken aback by this because her brother didn't really know his father at all. I mean, he was born in South Africa and Rosemary left South America before she even gave birth to her son. So Phoenix was just a bit put off by this and she was expecting to see her brother and her sister and she only got one of her siblings. And then I'm not sure if it was completely Phoenix's decision or if she was maybe coerced by her mom a little bit, but Phoenix ended up terminating the pregnancy and she then left her mom's caravan and ended up staying with Kyle in Clovelly. So now that we have a rough background of everybody, let's get to the reason why everyone is here and let's get into the actual crime that took place. So on the 7th of March 2013, there was a very heated argument between Phoenix and her mom Rosemary. Kyle stepped in and they were shouting, swearing, and there was even some scratching. It was just a very nasty argument. So after everyone had had their say and the arms stopped flying everywhere, Rosemary then went back to her caravan near Fishhook. Phoenix and Kyle went back to their home in Clavelle. And because of this incredibly heated argument, Phoenix had now had enough. And she said to Kyle, actually, I'm done with my mom. We need to get rid of her. And that's where the plan to get rid of Rosemary Tebron started to develop. And I wouldn't exactly call it a master plan. It was a very simple plan in the fact that Phoenix suggested that she just walk up behind her mom, hit her at the back of the head with a spade and let it be done with. And Kyle was like, okay, just hold on. That's a little bit inhumane. I suggest maybe we just strangle her to death. I mean, what a lovely conversation between a couple. And Phoenix thought that this was a great idea and she couldn't wait for this plan to get into action. And the reason that she was so happy to get rid of her mom was because she was done. She was fed up with how her mom kept treating her and her siblings, just palming them off to whoever she could, whenever she wanted to. And she was also tired of constantly feeling in danger and constantly feeling neglected by her mom. And that was one of many reasons why she wanted to get rid of her mother. So a couple days went by and now this fight was water under the bridge. And for some reason, Kyle and Phoenix invited Rosemary and her little sister to come and live with them in Clovelly. And I assume maybe it's because Rosemary actually had the money. So Rosemary moves in and things aren't exactly all peachy. Because ever since Rosemary moved in, Kyle, Rosemary and Phoenix all going at each other all the time. There's constant bickering in the house. So on the 17th of March 2013, Rosemary is still living with Kyle and Phoenix. And as per usual, Kyle and Phoenix get up out of bed and they then head outside onto the porch and they then start smoking weed. Rosemary could then smell weed coming coming through her window and she really didn't like the smell. She got out of bed. She then said to Phoenix, you need to stop smoking because I don't like smoking around the children, which I kind of agree with her on that. But then Phoenix turned around and said, how can you start pointing fingers at me when you smoked even worse drugs when I was a child? You took psychedelics, you smoked joints. And she was just bringing up the past about what Rosemary did. And it was this constant kind of fighting. So it was this constant type of fighting back and forth and just arguing all day. So Rosemary eventually then just let it go and she went back to bed. And from the moment Kyle and Phoenix woke up, they didn't really have anything else to do. They were just kind of walking around the house, picking things on the porch, cleaning the house, and that's really all they did. So Kyle now decided that he wanted to clean the dishes and at around 11 a.m. he started cleaning the kitchen and cleaning the dishes and he now woke up Rosemary again. And Rosemary was really, really pissed off because she just worked the late shift that night. So she was just coming to sleep. So she slept most of the day and then worked at night. So Rosemary then gets out of bed. She starts shouting at Kyle and they now going at each other. The fighting between Rosemary and Kyle then wakes up Phoenix's little sister 
So Phoenix tries to comfort her sister and it's just this constant negativity in the house. Eventually Rosemary calmed down and she went back to her bedroom and she kind of napped for a little bit but then she got back up and she then went to play on her computer. And then when she was playing on her computer, Phoenix then walked into the bedroom and started asking her mom whether or not she's decided to give her little sister a formal education and take her to school. Her mom just laughed at her and said, no, why would I take her to school? I'm busy homeschooling her and we're not going to stay here very long. We're going to get back in our caravan and we're going to go to wherever we feel like it. So putting her in a formal school and then taking her out is just not best for her. And as a side note, I do find it a little bit hard to believe that Rosemary is constant with her homeschooling because if she works most nights and comes to sleep during the day, is there really that amount of time to give her youngest daughter the attention and the schooling that she needs? But then again, we also don't know because humans are incredibly resourceful and I'm sure she maybe did make time for her youngest daughter. But anyway, so Phoenix was not impressed with her mom's answer. She really wanted her younger sister to have a formal education and she didn't want her sister to fall down the same trap that she did. So Rosemary then was kind of done with the conversation. She waved Phoenix off and she told her to get out of the room. She then started putting on her makeup as she was now going to get ready for work. She decided to go in a bit earlier with the hopes that maybe she could leave earlier as well. So with Rosemary getting done, Kyle and Phoenix then decided to keep cleaning the house. They then gave the little girl breakfast. And then when Rosemary left for work, as well as making sure that the youngest child had food, they then decided that they were gonna go outside back onto the stoop or the porch, and they then smoked another one. And when they were busy sitting outside smoking and thinking about life, Phoenix then decided that actually it's time for her mom to go. And Kyle then agreed and he was like, yes, he thinks it might be better without your mom here. So now the plan is set and it is now put into motion. Rosemary actually did end up getting off work earlier as she had hoped and she got home at around 7 p.m. She also got a lift from someone at work, so she arrived earlier than she expected as well because she would usually take public transport. But she gets to the house in Clarelli, she then opens the gate, and she's greeted with a happy and smiling Phoenix at the door. Phoenix then approaches her with this massive smile on her face, she then goes in, hugs her mom. She's like, hi, how are you? I hope you had a good day. And she's like, I'm so sorry about our fight earlier. And she's keeping her mom distracted. And her mom is like, okay, she let her guard down. Her daughter's being so nice. And while this is all happening, Kyle then walks behind Rosemary. He then picks up a rope that he had hidden just around the porch. And then he's going to take the rope and put it around her neck. But he kind of chickens out last minute and he doesn't have the courage to do so. So Phoenix sees this and she's like, okay, mom, let's just go inside. Come, come, let's go inside. So Phoenix leads her mom into the house. She takes her bag, she puts her bag on the counter and she keeps talking to her mom. And then she decides, actually, I'm going to give my mom a really big hug. So she puts her arms around her mom and she bear hugs her and she kind of locks her hands in so that she's got a really tight grip on her mom and she's squeezing her mom really tight. And then she gives this really dirty and serious look at Kyle Kyle kind of gets the picture that he has to get on with it. So he then takes the rope and he puts it around Rosemary's neck and he just pulls tighter and tighter. Now Rosemary is stuck in this bare lock and Kyle has this rope around her neck. So she can't move to grab this rope at all. But then Kyle and Phoenix decide to get her out of the middle of the passageway in the house. They then drag Rosemary into her bedroom. They put her on the bed with Kyle still having the rope around her neck but the movement kind of loosens the rope a bit. So Rosemary is able to move just a little bit. She's kicking and she's scratching and Phoenix is shouting at Kyle now to not let go, keep the rope around her neck. You need to make sure that you tie it tighter so she can't breathe. Phoenix then keeps telling Kyle, you need to keep the rope around her neck for at least four minutes until you hear a really big sigh come out of her mouth and then you'll know that she's dead. Clearly Phoenix had done her homework, but eventually Rosemary's legs stop flailing around, they go completely still and Phoenix gets exactly what she's been waiting for and she hears this last bit of air or sigh come out of her mother's mouth. So Kyle now hears the sigh and he gets quite scared, he lets go of the rope and Phoenix is so proud of him, she kind of comforts him, and then she says, well done, you know, thank you so much for that, babe, love you, love you, but now I need to bury her. And Phoenix kind of pushes Kyle to get off the bed and bury her mother. 
And Kyle said, no, he's not doing that. He does not have the strength or the courage to bury the woman that he just murdered right now. He was quite taken aback and quite shaken up about everything. So the couple then decided that they would just cover Rosemary in black bags and then leave her in the corner of the room. They also cleaned up a little bit of blood that was on the floor because she was leaking a little bit of blood out of her ear. Then Kyle was absolutely shaking the whole night. He then decided that he was just going to smoke crystal meth the entire night. Phoenix then went to her bedroom and fell asleep like a baby, but Kyle couldn't sleep the entire night. Phoenix then woke up quite early. She then went to Kyle who was standing outside on the porch and she said, okay, we actually need to get rid of Rosemary now. So in the morning before her little sister woke up, and yes, they did all of this while Phoenix's little sister was sleeping in the room. They dig a shallow grave right in between the police station and their home. So in Clavelli, there's like this sandy kind of walkway area and like a wetland where you can go for walks. And this is where they buried her initially in a very shallow grave. And the police station is just a couple meters in front of them on the main road. So Kyle and Phoenix had to come up with a plan because someone would notice that Rosemary was missing. So they decided that Phoenix would act like the really sad daughter who really cared about her mom. She would go to the police station to report her mom missing and Kyle and her would then make missing person flyers. So maybe an hour or two later, Phoenix started to go on social media and she started to report her mom missing and she was asking everybody if they knew where she was. And then at around nine o'clock that night, she then went to the police station to report her mom officially missing. But when Phoenix got to the police station, the police had questions for her. They weren't gonna just be like, oh, okay, she's missing, great. They wanted to know more information, what she was wearing, what she looked like, where they had last seen her. And Phoenix described what she was wearing and Phoenix also described exactly the last spot that she had seen her mom in. And Phoenix said to the police officers that she last saw her mom getting into a white Mercedes and that was the last she had ever seen of her mom. So the search continued and weeks went by and no one knew anything about Rosemary. But then a couple weeks later, Rosemary's sister, Angelique, really believed that Rosemary had maybe just gone on one of her episodes where she leaves the kids and she goes off gallivanting, partying or going to look for work. And she really believed that Rosemary would return for her 40th birthday and also her youngest daughter's birthday because they both shared the same birthday. So obviously Rosemary didn't show up for her 40th birthday and now people were really worried. But they also felt really bad for the children as well as Rosemary. But they felt really badly for the children. So they started giving food and money to Phoenix to take care of her sister but also to eat. Kyle then got a job at a surfing shop in Musenberg where he earned some money but it was not enough to pay the bills and to feed everyone. But because of the money that they saved from everybody giving them as well as the money that they saved not having to buy food, they did save enough to actually leave Clovelli. And Kyle, Phoenix and their younger sister ended Ended up moving to Gordon's Bay and at this point the three of them were really happy they were all getting along the youngest little girl was now going to school and Phoenix was very proud of her and she was saying online like on Facebook and everything she was happy she was thriving and her teachers really loved her but Kyle couldn't really shake what he did that night and he was still taking a lot of drugs and he was still smoking a lot and eventually he met another guy who was also living in the same complex as them and the guy that Kyle met his name is Godfrey Skippers and he was around 20 years old at the time and the two became very close they became very good friends and they shared everything eventually and Kyle eventually thought that he was now brave enough to share what he had done to Rosemary and he told Godfrey everything. Eventually, Kyle actually convinced Godfrey to help dig Rosemary up from Clavelli because he thought that they were going to be caught because it was an incredibly shallow grave. So eventually, Godfrey agreed, and the two of them then drove from Gordon's Bay to Clavelli. They then dug up Rosemary's body, put her body in the back of Godfrey's car, and then they were heading back to Gordon's Bay. They then stopped down Baden Powell Drive, where there's a lot of desolate area, a lot of beach sand and sand dunes, and they then decided to park the car in the middle of the night and then drag Rosemary's body and then bury her near Baden Powell Drive. So now that they had buried her body, they then headed back to Gordon's Bay. Eventually as well, Godfrey started feeling incredibly guilty for what he had done. And his way of coping was to journalize everything and to write everything down. So in a journal that he kept, he wrote everything that Kyle had said from the beginning of how much they hated Rosemary to the point where and what time and the location of where they had dumped Rosemary's body. Then around two months later, after Godfrey and Kyle had dumped Rosemary's body down Baden-Powell, 
Godfrey had had enough and he then went to the police station near Gordon's Bay and he then reported everything he had done and he also handed over the journal that he was keeping with all of his confessions inside. The police then hopped into a car, they went down Baden Powell Drive, they were then shown by Godfrey where Rosemary's body was, they put it in an investigation van and they then took it off to the pathology lab. About five weeks later the DNA came back confirming that it was Rosemary and Phoenix and Kyle were then arrested in late September. The couple then appeared in Simonstown Magistrate Court, but the first appearance that the Kyle and Phoenix had, they were constantly giggling, they were laughing the whole time and they were taking nothing seriously. But then, a couple days later when the couple had to return, they were completely changed. Phoenix was crying the entire time, she constantly had her head tucked in her arm and she was just sobbing. And Kyle was very serious, he didn't make any noise. And obviously this was kind of a wake up call that something serious was waiting for them. Then, on the 2nd of May 2014, Phoenix, at the age of 19 years old, accepted a plea bargain and basically turned against Kyle, which obviously came as a shock for him and his defense. In Phoenix's testimony, she said that Kyle was the mastermind and she just went along with everything because she was scared of him, but the judge didn't believe her and in the end, she got a 20-year sentence with five years suspended, so she would basically only spend 15 years in prison. And Phoenix Racing Cloud Tehran is currently spending her time in Baltimore prison. And if we go back to Kyle, he was actually living his best life because he was released on bail for a couple of months. And he was posting on social media how happy he was. And this really upset Rosemary's family quite a lot. But when it came time for Kyle to take the stand again, he then said to the judge that he doesn't remember anything that happened that day because he was so high on crystal meth. The judge then decided that Kyle should actually be taken to Falkenberg Psychiatric Hospital to go under a month of psychiatric testing and to see whether he was fit to stand trial. Then after a month, the psychologist did deem him fit to stand trial, which he did, and Kyle did end up taking a plea bargain, which meant that he was then sentenced to 18 years in prison with five years suspended, which mean that he would only spend 13 years in prison. And the reason that he didn't get more than 20 years is because he was still a minor when he murdered Rosemary. And in South Africa, you may not sentence a minor to more than 20 years in prison. So Kyle was 17 years old at the time, about to turn 18, but it didn't matter because he still had not hit 18 yet. Kyle Maspera is also serving time in Baltimore prison. Kyle and Phoenix had obviously not only ruined the life of Rosemary Tehran, they had also ruined the life of her mom because Rosemary's mom had went into a very severe depression. She was in and out of hospital from depression to illness and she was just really struggling. And not only was Rosemary's mom struggling, but also Rosemary's sister, Angelique. Angelique really struggled with the fact that Kyle and Phoenix had murdered her sister and sadly just a couple months after hearing that Kyle and Phoenix had done it she then took her own life leaving behind her husband and her two children. And that is the case of Phoenix Racing Cloud Tehran. I wouldn't say that it was one of the most well-known cases but it's incredibly disturbing as well. Let me know what you think of this case down below and if you have ever lived in the area or heard of this case. I hope that you are having a great day. Please stay safe out there. Don't talk to strangers and I'll see you again next week. Bye.